Praise be Jesus Christ. I want to summarize for you Blessed Conchita's book, Seasons of the Soul. St. John of the Cross gave us the ascent of Mount Carmel. St. Uh, Catherine of Siena gave us the bridge. St. Teresa of Avila gave us the interior castle. Uh, many of the uh, teachers of the spiritual life uh, remind us of the three stages of the spiritual life, the purgative, the illuminative, and the unitive stage of the spiritual life. All of this is good. Blessed Conchita gives us the seasons of the soul. Profound, beautiful. I think it might become my new go-to image, my new go-to metaphor for the, uh, the maturing of the soul towards perfection, simply because it's so simple. It's so easy for people to grasp. People get it as soon as you describe um, her metaphor. And so the idea is, is the soul has to go through the seasons just as a harvest has to go through the seasons and we go through these seasons over and over again so it's cyclical um, and obviously the the seasons are the spring the summer the autumn and the winter and the idea is again if you use the Im uh, imagery of of cultivation if you have an apple tree in the spring, the apple tree is beautiful and, and it blossoms. It has, it's filled with flowers and it fills the air with a wonderful aroma. But uh, flowers, blossoms, apple blossoms, they're kind of useless. Then the, the blossoms fall to the ground and the apple tree goes through the winter where the fruit, or, or rather the summer, where the fruit m matures. And again, during the summer, I don't know if you've ever tried eating an apple that's not yet ripe, kind of useless. But then comes the autumn when the air is once again filled with now the smell of, of, of ripe fruit. And the springtime is a, is a season of smiling. The fall or the autumn is a season of smiling. The summer, a little harder to smile during that season because of the, the, the scorching heat and the storms and, and all of that. And then there's the winter when the apple tree would be pruned and the cold, harsh winter kills off some of the bugs in that so that the tree can remain healthy. Now, I'm giving you my own kind of version or description of what she describes. What I want to do is I want you to hear straight from her. I'm just going to read to you a few quotes. Um, she begins her book uh, like this. The soul experiences springtime in the beginning that is, usually upon entering into the spiritual life. That is when the Lord provides consolation and a very powerful attraction to virtue, along with a very great facility for practicing it. The soul truly enters into an atmosphere that is perfumed and strolls among the flowers beneath a cloudless sky that is always serene and enchanting. She goes on to say, the soul rarely loses the presence of God, which seems very natural to her. She goes on to say, It does not occur to her that she must conquer heaven, for she seems to almost touch its fullness, and she sees herself in possession of it. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna say he goes, she goes on to say over and over again, but I'm just kind of skipping over, I'm just reading highlights, okay. The Lord causes the soul to feel a touch of infinite love. Now she gives warnings. She, she mentions traps during each season. She says, Woe to the soul who does not lay up provision for the following seasons that she will have to pass through. And she says, The soul is bothered that others do not feel as she does. So there's an immaturity in the springtime of the soul. Okay, now let's look at the summer of the soul once the, the uh, soul has passed through the springtime. In the summer, not only are the virtues longed for, they are practiced. Dry winds are sent that blow the petals from the flowers, strengthen the fruit so that it might begin to grow. This torrid season brings with it many dry spells. The soul weeps but remains firm, affixed to the tree of the cross for all her strength. Summer is usually the longest period of the interior life, the hardest and the most difficult. It is the development of the soul in the spiritual life. Discouragements are the most common hindrances in the summer. 
Okay, and then we get into the autumn. In the autumn of the soul, the fruits finish ripening. The soul then has the color and taste of Jesus, since the transformation into him is complete. The soul is made beautiful. In this stage of autumn, the soul is overflowing. And more than ever, she needs to speak of God because she, she is filled to the brim with him. And then we enter into the winter of the soul. She has a lot more to say in each chapter. She gets into a lot of just beautiful, profound insights. She, all, she speaks a lot of the mystery of the cross. You kind of understand the need for the cross when you read her little book here. She speaks about the winter. This season is trying for the body. It is the season of harvests. The soul is already in kernel. It is already wheat ready to be crushed. There is no greenery, no flowers, nor even fruit, but everywhere only snow, ice, frost, which only serve to keep the great flames of the heart ablaze. These frosts kill all the earthly microbes of the soul, that the spring might afterwards be more exuberant. Then comes the pruning to cast to the ground all loves and attachments which might impede grace. Winter is beautiful in a courageous and vigorous soul. The winter encompasses enormous riches known only to those souls who apply themselves. And so there's a few quotes from the Seasons of the Soul. Um, this edition is printed by St. Paul's. You can also get it in Spanish. I encourage you to give it a read. Let me know what you think. Viva Cristo Rey.